This is the soldering station that I use in the solar shed here most of the time. It's based on the uh, Hako 936 handles and tips and that sort of thing. Um, the soldering station and the handle itself, of course, is a Chinese clone. But I've been really pleased with it, pleased enough to uh, actually send one to Julian Eilert to thank him for all his fascinating videos and I'm glad to see in his recent videos he seems to be enjoying using it. But while looking around the usual sellers to find one of these to send to Julian, well I found another soldering iron which piqued my interest so I thought I'd give it a go. And here it is, it's a, uh, well what's it say here, a Handstar PX988 digital soldering iron with uh, micro digital control, more function, quick heating, and mini and portable. Um, and it's compatible with the 900M series tips, which is excellent and experts recommend. Here are all the stats on the back in Chinese, but thankfully in English as well. It's a 90 watt iron, uh, but it actually might go up to 145. Um, 220 volt, uh, 100 to 480 degrees C, 900M series tips, and uh, the heating element is printed porcelain 220 volt. Um, it's mini CPU controlled, excellent. And if we have a look here at the very bottom of the box, this shows all the different types of 900M series tips. Uh, that you can buy, and there's, what, um, about 20, uh, I would say. Enough for everybody to find their perfect tip. So inside the cardboard sleeve is the soldering iron in a plastic bag, and, uh, well, a very brief manual. And first impressions are quite good. It feels very similar to my existing um, handles on my soldering station. I mean, it's obviously based around the same design here, the 900 series. There we go, there's the tip and the uh, ceramic heating element there. That goes back on there and we can tighten that back up quite happily. Yeah, it feels okay. A, a bit weighty here at the moment, but uh, let's undo the cable and then we can lose some of that weight off the end of the uh, soldering iron um yeah it definitely feels heavier with a heavier piece of cable and the handle itself feels a bit heavier but actually do you know what it feels reasonably nice so uh that's a good start there is of course a slightly obvious problem here that this has come with a european plug there on the end and the supplier sent it with an adapter which on the surface seems great doesn't it but there is a bit of an issue and of course that issue is around the grounding of the tip no connection whatsoever there and that's because of this adapter there is no earth pin to go into this adapter so uh, for this to be safe well we need to make sure that we've got an earth all the way to the tip so i definitely need to take this european plug off and uh, put a British plug on to make sure it works nice and safely. And they certainly do point out that grounding is important in this tiny, tiny text here on the box. It says, please connect the grounding well, avoid causing electric shock. So let's make sure we do that. So with a uh, British standard plug to hand, let's cut that off and uh, get rid of that and uh, well I'll wire this up now looking at this flex it does seem to be a sort of PVC based thing the uh, cores are correctly covered there the insulation on the cores I should say is correctly colored and uh, the uh, material inside well yeah it seems copper colored I'm not convinced it is copper though um, and it's claimed to be uh, where is it here? Um, three times 0.5 millimeter squared. So uh, that should be all right for the uh, 90 watts. 
Now, I was taught how to wire a plug in science lessons at school. I don't, I don't think they do that anymore because uh, most things come with a sealed plug on them. But uh, I was always told, keep the uh, live link here quite short and uh, a bit of excess here on the earth means that if the cable ever did get pulled out, the first thing to disconnect is the live and the last thing to disconnect would be the earth a bit of a safety uh, measure there so this is all wired up um but there's a 13 amp fuse in here so i need to find something a bit lower hopefully i've got a three amp fuse somewhere and there we go let's pop the lid on and we should be good to fire this thing up and just a final check here that we've got continuity from the tip to the earth pin perfect i'm happy to plug that in Right, before I turn it on, actually I'm going to swap this tip because this isn't the sort of tip that I like. Uh, it's the typical sort of tip, so a general purpose tip that comes with a lot of soldering irons, but I prefer uh, one of these. I can't remember what they're called. Is it a wedge or a... I don't know, but uh, it's just a 2 millimeter flat um, wedge I don't know anyway that will go quite happily on there and we'll start to tighten that up but before I tighten it all the way I'll just rotate that tip so it feels like it's in the right place uh, dependent on where the cables going usually makes you feel like that's about right excellent now uh, these tips are very cheap and you can get these selection packs for about three pounds four dollars something like that with nine or ten uh, different types of soldering iron tips in here and these are really good just to get hold of when you buy a soldering iron like this so that you can find the tip that works best for you and uh, the one that works best in different situations so I've got a soldering iron stand here and uh, I think we can plug this in and uh, well straight away I'm seeing there's nothing on the screen whatsoever so if I press that button excellent it's come on and the temperature is rising 150 degrees C already and uh, climbing quite fast i would suggest i wonder where the default temperature is to start with 300 320 still climbing 350 and uh, there is a bit of smoke there is a bit of oil protection probably on the tip that's being burnt off a little bit um while that heats up so it's not unusual for something getting so hot to uh, give off a bit of smoke uh, to start with but uh, yes indeed it is up to some sort of temperature so that i can tin the iron there and um, that seems to work reasonably well uh, 350 degrees let's carefully see if we can adjust that so if i press once and then twice and now we're going down in five degree um, measurements which seems fairly sensible if we set it now to 300 degrees it just shows us that it's at 300 degrees it doesn't actually show the live temperature when you reduce it what happens when we increase it press it once it starts flashing press it a few times again let's try 360 once it's programmed the uh, backlight on the screen goes solid so when it's increasing in temperature it does seem to show you the live temperature but when you're decreasing for some reason it doesn't actually show you the tip temperature oh it is this time didn't do that last time did it okay well perhaps that was just a blip so it does show you the live tip temperature after you've changed the uh, programmed temperature so the soldering iron's been sat at 300 degrees c for a little while so 
hopefully that temperature has regulated quite nicely and I've got my soldering iron uh, thermometer here which is another Hako clone actually uh, 13 degrees it claims in the uh, solar shed at the moment so I'll add a bit of solder place it there on the center and this is reading 338 degrees not the uh, 300 claimed on the iron now hopefully if we press both the buttons at the same time no perhaps we press the red button it says 27 degrees i don't know what So do we say it's 38 degrees above where it should be? No, quite the opposite then. So uh, that's got now gone back to suggesting it's 312 degrees. Let's just double check, let's clean the tip, put a bit of solder on. Yeah, that's way above 346 degrees. So if we press the red button and we bring that down, if we bring it down to zero, that might be about right. Red button, save that in, give that a moment to regulate. Put it back in my stand for a moment. Okay, so we'll clean the tip again. Bit of solder on the tip to make a good thermal contact. Oh, that's quite impressive actually. 308 degrees and the iron's claiming 300. Let's see if we can get that absolutely bob on. So we were eight degrees over. Let's change it to minus eight degrees. Give it a second to regulate. Bit of solder on the tip. Two hundred and ninety six so uh, that can probably go up just a tad minus five let's try that that's pretty good we're pretty much on the button now this seems to be regulating almost exactly correctly so that's quite impressive there we go 300 degrees on the thermometer 300 degrees on the soldering iron now i've allowed the iron to cool down um, so that I can touch and hold it. Yeah, that's absolutely fine. So it's pretty cool now and I've attached it to my mains watt meter so that we can see if it consumes exactly what the packet said it should consume, which I think was 145 watts, absolute maximum, uh, 90 watts typical. So let's turn it on. Uh, there we go. So that temperature is rising, we're seeing 141 watts there briefly and now that's dropping back 70 watts, 60 watts uh, as that temperature is regulating at 300 degrees and we're fairly confident that is an accurate 300 degrees and in fact now we're all the way down to 1 watt, so that's probably the lowest that this can measure and then just tipping to uh, 40 watts as that heating element is turned on and turned off just to keep that temperature regulated so that seems about right um, we saw 60 watts not the 90 watts sort of claimed but we did see that peak of 140 watts as well so uh, yeah 
I think that's uh, within specification. So we need to see how well it solders, doesn't it? So I've put just a few components here on this little PCB. And if we spin it over, um, get our solder. Perhaps I should have blue tacked this PCB down. That seems to be working reasonably well. Yep, uh, the larger connection here of that power connector, give it a little bit longer, and that seems to be soldering just fine. It's still set to 300 degrees centigrade at the moment, um, which I usually solder a little bit higher than that, probably 320. Um, is about right for me and uh, the speed of my soldering but that seems to solder reasonably well i think it's also worth checking it's got the thermal mass for something a bit bigger so we'll try this xt60 connection which i'll just tin slightly and then we'll put this uh, 14 awg cable in there see what we can get going see if uh, this might not be the best tip for this job but after a few seconds uh, we seem to have a decent electrical and physical connection so that's the Hamstar PX988 temperature controlled soldering iron and you know what i think this is a decent step up from the uh, single temperature standard mains connected soldering iron that many people use the temperature regulation and calibration are both pretty good in fact with zero offset set on here i found that the temperature was almost exactly bob on the fact that it uses the 900M series tips is excellent because they're readily available and cheap. It is worth checking that the tip is earthed and if like me you find you've been given an adapter that isn't really compatible it's worth cutting off the existing plug and putting on a proper one. And with that all said, well I'm pretty impressed with this soldering iron. Hopefully you've enjoyed this video. If you have, give me a thumbs up, subscribe down below, comment if you can, and I'll see you next time. Thanks for watching.